Last but not least, we got point actions. I'm going to go down here to the very bottom and choose Initialize Q Cube with resolution of 2. And if we hover over a point, you're going to see there's not as many options as the other two. Now the first one over here, bridging two points, is a really easy way to kind of go through here and cut geometry. And in fact, if you want to hover over an edge and say spin edge, you can go through here and you can spin these edges in different directions. Or like we mentioned before, you can say delete edge and just go through here and delete these edges. Now you can also bridge ring. And what that'll do is if you select the center point, it'll go ahead and bridge points to that center point you're selecting. So if we go up here to geometry, let's turn off the smooth modifier, hit divide, delete lower. And then again, if we edge, uh, hover over this and say bridge ring, again, it's just going to take those surrounding points and bridge them to the middle. Crease, we'll go ahead and skip for now. You can delete any extra points that you want. You can say do nothing if you know, you're accidentally doing point action, just hover over this and say do nothing. You can extrude a point if you want. And remember, if you tap on points, you'll extrude to the same distance. Mask and transpose. Uh, I tend to use transpose a point so I can very quickly go through here and select a point or tap off and choose a new point and then transpose that if I need to. But generally speaking, I'm, I usually transpose like entire groups of points here. So instead of that, I'll say Q mesh polygroup all and just hold down shift to pull along that surface normal. We have uh, polygroups the same on both sides here, so that's why it's doing both sides. Of course, if I switch that to Polygroup Island, then I can just hold down Shift and pull along that normal. Now I can go through here and I can say, like, Q Mesh a point, and it's going to be very similar to Extrude, uh, but, you know, if I go through here and I tap this point two, three more times, it'll go ahead and Q Mesh up to that point, and then I can hold down Shift, and you'll see those are stitched together. Again, I don't know how often you'd use that, but it's there if you need it. You can also slide a point. So this will slide it along the pre-existing geometry. So I can slide up to here, slide down to here, and just slide along again that pre-existing geometry. So it'll slide along those uh, those edges that exist. Let's go ahead and undo that. Split is pretty cool. So you can go through here and you can split a point. And if you remember, you can also just tap to get the exact same split. And if you hover over a face now, say Q Mesh Polygroup Island, and then just pull this through your object, it'll go through and stitch all the way through your object. So very quickly, you can now go through here and say like bevel, edge loop complete, and then again go to the other side and bevel this out. And again, that's just hovering over a point and saying split point. You can also split multiple points if you want to go through here. Let's make this a little bit smaller here, so we'll pull it out. And we'll split all these points. And since those are all the same polygroup now, you can say Q mesh polygroup all, and you can just push these all back in and get that result. You can stitch two points as well. And that's just basically going to uh, click on this point and then click on that point, and it's going to collapse them down in that direction. So that's another way. Instead of collapsing an edge, you can just stitch two points together. Just click one point and then the other and you can stitch these. Of course, if you're doing it for this reason, it might be easier just to use collapse. However, let's say we didn't have any geometry here. I'm gonna hover over a face, say delete a single poly. Now you can go through here and you can say stitch two points and grab this point and this point and go ahead and stitch those together. Stitch and stitch. And you can again hover over here and say slide along the surface or Go back in here and say transpose this point, and then I'm just going to alt tap here, maybe reset, and now we can just kind of slide along that surface here. Now, one thing I should mention when we're bridging two holes, uh, you can you can bridge like this shape here. So we'll say delete a poly to this shape here. So you can say bridge two holes here, and it will go ahead and make sure that those are compatible. So we'll switch this over here to Spline, Interactive Curvature, and Resolution. So I can bridge two very different holes, and it'll go ahead and modify the edges it needs to in order to fit this weird shape to this shape here. 
and make it work. Also, if you go through here and you say delete poly, even if they're the same, and we say bridge two holes, you can choose circle or spline, or you can do like round corners or tight round corners, and that'll give you a different shape as you pull this out, depending on uh, what you're trying to make. And one thing I want to bring up when we're talking about transpose, uh, and this is a hard surface thing as well, you'll notice that I have uh, perspective off while I'm working in ZBrush, and that's pretty universal. If I'm trying to match a portrait or something, I'll go in here to the draw camera angle, and like if they shot the portrait with a 35 millimeter camera, I'll set my camera to that. Of course, you need to have perspective on, and then you can switch between these two modes here. But generally speaking, I'll have perspective off, and especially if I hit W, and then alt tap on my surface, you'll see it makes it perfectly flat to that surface. However, what can happen is if you have perspective turned on and you alt tap a surface, it'll seem kind of on that plane. However, if you turn perspective off and hold down shift, you're gonna see it's just a little bit off. So I'm not gonna pull straight in that direction. It's gonna kind of be askew. So instead, if I have perspective off, that gives me a much more accurate surface snapping or normal finding. So certainly while I'm using gizmo and transpose or holding down control and tapping and then pulling out poly loops and stuff like this, I'll definitely try to have perspective off. There's some new functionality from ZBrush 2021.5 and I'm gonna keep pointing these resources again on my YouTube channel. If you go into the playlist sections, you can go to the ZBrush 2021, what's new. Uh, and then on my ArtStation page, you can also dive into here. Any new releases that come out, you can go and check those out. One of those being, let's go ahead and take this tool palette. We're gonna go in here, grab a cube 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, turn on polyframe here and hit make poly mesh 3D so we can start editing this. I'm also gonna change my startup material to skin shader four. And if you hover over an edge uh, with BZM or the Z modeler brush, and then hold down the space bar, you're gonna see there is a new uh, slice mesh option over here. And in fact, if you hover over a point, there is also a slice mesh option and there is a face slice mesh option as well uh, up here. However, usually when I'm doing this, uh, in fact, you may even have this installed. If you hit B in your brush menu, there's a ZM slice. How I have this set up is I basically took my Z modeler brush and went down here and I cloned it off. And if you go back through this playlist, you're gonna see the creating and saving custom brushes section. I basically saved out a brush that has this already set up. So on the edges, I have a slice mesh. On the points, I have slice mesh. And on the face, I have polygroup fill. So as I'm slicing, I can go through there and quickly just fill any polygroups I want. And basically what the slice, group, slice mesh is gonna do is you can click on an edge and then click on a point, or you can click from a point to an edge or an edge to a point or a point to a point, and it's gonna go through and just slice up your mesh. So this becomes a lot easier to make arbitrary cuts through your mesh. And then of course, if you wanna go through here and hover over an edge and then switch this to collapse. Of course, I kind of want you to leave my ZM slice brush alone. So again, I'm gonna go to my Z modeler brush. I have a hotkey for that. Set to Alt Q. So I can just go through here and I'll change this one uh, edge to collapse. So I can go through here and I can just collapse these edges down if I want to, just to kind of clean this up. But again, that's just a reminder. You can set these uh, Z modeler brushes up however you'd like. I have a ZM slice, I have a ZM topology. The ZM topology is set to extrude edge on the edge actions and the point is set to move by rush radius and also snap the surface, uh, and so is the edge as well. So, And on this one, the face is set to do nothing because when I'm doing topology, uh, I don't need a face action to actually do anything.